We're very fortunate today to have three panelists who are leaders in that transition from asking aggregate data questions to asking questions and making predictions at the individual level. And they've done this work in healthcare, education, retail, and beyond. We have 166 clients across 450 hospitals that are piping data in in real time and in looking at a million lives on a daily basis. One of the things that we are focusing on is not just essentially getting the insight, but actually closing the loop and changing the care process. It's not just the insight, but actually changing uh, how we deliver care and how care is delivered. Right. The research that we've undertaken at Teacher Match is to um, see if we could find a way to put something on the front end of the process that could assist busy educational leaders. And so what we've created is, a, is this predictive psychometric assessment that's fed by um, big data and continues to be fed by what we call an iterative feedback loop. Teaching really hasn't changed much in the last thousand years, but it's about to. And why? Because I think of the data we are managing to create, to share. How can we in real time collect information and then build models that helps me as a teacher? So we are amassing over time more and more of kind of that basic application data. We're just on the, the edge of being able to start mining um, multiple insights from multiple sources. But I think you need to push way further than that. For me, the question is what data do we have where we don't even think about using them and what should we here as people who shape the attitude of society towards data? What should we do? What is the right thing to do? So before we wrap up, I just want each of you to give us a quick, a quick snapshot of what does the future hold for big data? We would like to see big data actually become really boring and uninteresting like operating here, here. systems. We really don't care about it. It's there and there's people that manage it, but I'm actually getting benefit of using those platforms and tools and I can actually focus on business problems and not infrastructure problems. Some tools in the hands yes. of the people that understand the problems. It just needs to work. There's so many silos of data that if put together could be insightful and could be done so in a way that protects privacy. Um, but sometimes I feel like people don't understand just how great this could be for kids, for patients, et cetera, et cetera. So I think we need to do a lot more as big data evangelizers to really help people understand um, what this could mean across fields. The question is always, where is the bottleneck? What is holding us back? And I don't think it's the boxes. I don't think it's the algorithms. I think it is the attitude people have towards their data. Elevating the conversation, lifting up the conversation, and focusing on the trade-offs, that is, I think, where the next steps in the world of big data lie. I want to thank you all for letting us recast big data from the three Vs, velocity, volume, and variety, into the three Ps, patience, personalization, and pedagogy. So thank you and thank you to our very terrific panelists.